So thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. We are very excited to announce our Drones as First Responders program. Um, we will be sending out a press release immediately after this that will have everything in written detail for you to reference. We will also send out a link that has B-roll that you can utilize in your stories. We are hoping to set up demos in the near future, but those are things that we're going to have to plan and schedule out to show you the fullness of how this works. Um, so again, thank you to all of our media partners for coming out here, to the members of our drone team who are able to make it today, and especially to the representatives from the Village of Clemens that made the time to be here. We're going to have multiple partners speak today because it took a whole team to make this happen. There is a lot of technology, there's a lot of support that's needed from different areas, and we are so proud that so many people came together to do this. We are the first program in North Carolina of this kind, and we are one of only 11 nationwide with the waivers to do this. So without further ado, Sheriff Kimbrough. Good morning. Uh, again, somebody reminded me uh, it was great to be in the greatest county in the state of North Carolina. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, one of the greatest counties in the country. Without question, one of the most technologically advanced law enforcement agencies in the state, without question. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. We're very excited to announce our DFR Drones First Responders. I have to tell you a story behind that, how this came to be. Most of you know, or some of you know, I began this quest to learn how to fly a plane about two years ago, learning how to become a pilot. Um, many times we go up in the uh, Pipple Stroll and the Archer, and I was amazed at how I could get from point A to point B, as they say, as the crow fly. And I started reflecting on times as an agent when we were using drones back in the early 2000s. And at that time, I met a young man. Uh, I say young because of his age and my age. I met a young man, Basil Yap, with Arrow X and a few other people. And I began asking the question, how would it be to get a plane up flying in what we call heat map areas to be able to gather information, to be able to respond, uh, to have a spotter. And so we began a conversation and we started talking about drones, how we could utilize drones. Uh, most of you may know that UPS and Zipline currently use drones as packaging delivery here in North Carolina. And so we went to a place called Chula Vista, California to study the drone program and how they used it as a first responder. And what I saw, I was truly amazed by it. And um, most of you know, I love being first. Um, I don't like being competitive. I want to be the drum major. And so I began the conversation with the county commissioners, uh, the village of Clemens, the office of the people, and started asking, how can we duplicate that program and bring it here to Forsyth County? It was a huge undertaking. And I know the question is, how much money did it cost? As I know that's on the forefront of everybody's mind. And so we began putting together the drone program. We began putting pilots in place. We began getting clearance from the FAA. And so thus we started building what we call our drone unit. A lot of people say, well, why did you choose the village of Clemens? What we wanted to do was, before we took it countywide, we wanted to perfect it in a part of the county they had enough volume of calls as well as a place that would be beneficial that we could launch it from, and thus we chose Clemens. Our, our plans is to take it countywide. So basically how the drone works is, is that in couple with what we call 911 Live, when a call comes into the communication systems, it also comes in to 911 Live. In other words, simultaneously as a call is coming in, it is coming into the call, into the cars and the zone areas, as well as the drone team. And so at the time that the call is coming in, the drone is being dispatched before a car ever gets there. So the drone gets there prior to the car getting there to be able to see everything in real time, port it back, share it, so the deputy knows exactly what he or she is going into. One of the incidents that I'm proud of that we, was, we were able to use it in was Young lady, the domestic issue was at work in Clemens at one of the restaurants. Uh, she realized that uh, the boyfriend that she had issues with, 50B, was out there in the parking lot waiting on her. Uh, she dialed 911 in a panic. Um, from the time she called, things about a minute and 30 seconds 
a drone was there capturing everything, license plates. We knew who was in the car. We knew the car was registered to. We had actually a visual of everything that was happening there. Uh, minutes later, the car arrived. Gentleman was arrested for possession of meth and some other things. But my point for sharing that is to just imagine being able to pick the phone up and you have coverage in under two minutes. That is amazing. That is not only serves as de-escalation to know that a car chase that normally may have taken place, you have tag numbers, you have video of the person, perpetrators, or whoever's there. You have so many things that you can use the drone for. You know, this is just the beginning of some of the technology that we are experimenting with that we have wrapped around into our real-time intelligence center, which we launched last year. This is just a part of that 21st century technology that we talked about in building here in what I consider one of the greatest counties in North Carolina, and by far the most advanced law enforcement agency in the state. And we pride ourselves on that because we want to bring the best possible service, life-saving measures to the residents of this county. And in order to do that, law enforcement has evolved from when I entered into law enforcement in 1984, that 38 years ago, something like that, if the math is correct. It's a different world out there. Technology has changed. And we feel that in order to be relevant, we have to be able to progress and grow as the future demands us. As more demands come into law enforcement, we have to be able to meet the future. And we're meeting the future. And so I'm glad that you all are here to, to see the video, to ask questions. So what I'd like to do now is I would like to bring up some of the people that were very instrumental in making this happen because you just don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, I want to fly a drone and start recording. There's so many things, laws, FAA regulations, so many things that you have to, what I would say, jump through hoops. And you have to be legal to do this. And so in doing that, again, I met a young man, Basil Yap, with Arrow X. And so what I like to do is uh, bring up Mr. Basil Yap. And then I like to bring up the mayor from Clemens, um, the mayor pro tem, Ms. Uh, Michelle Barson. And I like to bring up some other people. Uh, again, Basil. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Basil. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Basil Yap. I'm president of AeroX. This really is uh, an amazing day for Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, Forsyth County. So um, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Sheriff Kimbrough over the past three years to usher in this new era of, of aviation. And um, he's really a, a forward-thinking visionary leader who understands the importance of integrating new technology to improve the safety of our community. And um, you know, I've been working with North Carolina since 2015, helping build drone programs. Uh, before I was at AeroX, I, I built the drone program for the North Carolina Department of Transportation. And uh, Sheriff Kimbrough is one of the few public safety leaders that I've met that instantly recognized the value of utilizing drones to, to help protect both the citizen on the ground, but also uh, the officers responding. And so uh, it's been truly a pleasure to work with him. You know, North Carolina has been um, at the forefront of, of drone technology and integration. You know, it's because of innovative innovators like Sheriff Kimbrough um, that North Carolina has had this strong legacy, you know, starting with the Wright Brothers' first uh, manned flight on the banks of Kitty Hawk, and including uh, Tom Davis starting Piedmont Airlines at Smith Reynolds Airport, not far from here. Um, we've been, uh, again, a leader, and some of those examples are we were the first state to have a routine medical package delivery operation um, in the nation right here. We were the first state to respond to uh, a natural disaster using drones throughout the entire state. That was Hurricane Florence. We were the first state to have a certified drone delivery operation. That was UPS Flight Forward, which continues to operate uh, right here at Atrium Wake Forest Baptist Hospital. Um, and we were the first to have a, a public flying car demonstration here in, in 2020. And so we're using drones within our state for a variety of use cases now, from uh, finding missing children and elderly to monitoring fires, like the Weaver uh, fertilizer fire not long ago here, uh, to also delivering uh, critical medical supplies. And so um, 
Earlier this year, the sheriff and I traveled, as we heard, to Chula Vista in California, and we studied their program and learned about their uh, over three years of experience uh, building that particular program. And so we brought those that experience, coupled with the experience um, that I've had at uh, throughout the state, and we thoughtfully developed a program here, obtaining the uh, proper authorizations to uh, enable this program. And our, I just want to note that safety has always been the priority of this program. So safety of both those on the ground as well as those that are flying in the air. And so uh, we have, again, methodically developed a program that ensures the safety and that these operations are conducted uh, in the proper manner. So for those of you, for those of you who are not aware of what AeroX is, we're a nonprofit organization of business, government, and community um, partners focused on finding ways that uh, drones can help our community. We're based right here in Winston-Salem, and we're achieving nation-leading advances in, in drone technology. Um, I'll just quickly note, a couple of our members, such as Atrium Wake Forest Baptist and Novant, are using drones to move medical supplies right now in our state. Uh, we partnered with Elizabeth City State University uh, and Piedmont Flight Training as educational partners that we can provide uh, young people in our community the av aviation jobs of the future. And so now Winston-Salem and Forsyth County has become a model for drones within the nation uh, and within our state. And recently, the North Carolina General Assembly provided funding for us to help develop that program even further. And so that system called Project Atlas will help the sheriff uh, expand that program throughout our, our county. And so I just want to thank you, Sheriff Kimbrough, uh, for your leadership in leveraging these technologies. I want to thank uh, the Village of Clemens leadership for their interest and support in this new service. Thank you to our drone team and industry partners in making this uh, um, this come to fruition and uh, look forward to joining all of us for future um, announcements as we continue to, to build our ecosystem here in, uh, in the region. And so with that, you'll hear next from Sergeant Mullins. Um, he's the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office Drain Team Commander. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brian Mullins. I am the Sergeant over the Drone Team Unit here at the Sheriff's Office. And uh, I would just like to say that it is such a pleasure to work for Sheriff Kimbrough and uh, see his forward thinking and his desire to push all of us into using technology to make our jobs better, to make our community safer. Uh, it's very common in law enforcement circles with law enforcement leaders, sheriffs and chiefs of police that sometimes we resist change and we don't like to try new things. Well, here at the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, it's the exact opposite. Our leader is pushing us to adopt these changes and, and adopt these new technologies. And I'm very fortunate to be able to be a part of this program. I want to just take a moment and share with you how the Drone as a First Responder program works. I'll try to explain it as simply as I can, even though it's a very technologically complex uh, thing that happens. So. We have a room set up right around the corner here that is our drone operations room. We have multiple monitor screens in there. Uh, on those screens we have one program called Flight Radar where we monitor airplanes that are flying throughout the airspace. Uh, it gives us their altitude so we kind of monitor the area that we are flying in. The FAA restricts us to flying our drone at a maximum altitude of 400 feet above the ground. So we abide by those rules and all of our flights in Clemens are conducted at that altitude of 400 feet above the ground. So when a 911 call comes in in the Clemens area in conjunction with this program that we now have called Live 911, I will automatically hear coming through the speakers the actual 911 call. I will hear that person talking to our communicator who is upstairs and uh, as Sheriff Kimbrough mentioned, the incident at the restaurant in Clemens, that's exactly how that incident played out. I heard the 911 call come in, uh, talked to my pilot on the roof, made sure we were ready to go. We launched a drone, and the, the drone takes about 30 seconds to climb from the where it takes off to uh, its altitude of flight, which is 400 feet. And so including that climb to altitude and arriving on scene at this call, it was one minute and three seconds. 
We arrived before the deputies on the ground. We located the vehicle where it was parked. We were able to tell the arriving deputies where he was parked. And then we zoomed in and were able to watch the interaction between the deputies and this subject. Um, <clears throat> so when the call comes in, we find out the location of where it's at. I can click a point on a map or put in an address. And then the, the drone autonomously takes off, flies to its location. And then in transition flights, when it's flying to a location and when it's returning, the camera is pointed straight forward. So we're not looking down into anybody's backyards or anything trying to invade anyone's privacy. We fly to the location. The camera points down at 45 degrees, looking at whatever address we have flown to. And then the system allows me as the teleoperator to have control of the drone and maneuver it around and work the camera. Once that incident is over or the drone is no longer needed, uh, we simply push a button and return to home. The camera automatically comes back up looking straight ahead and flies back to its base and lands. So it's very simple in the way that it operates, but there's a whole lot of complex technology that goes into that. I will tell you about an incident that happened just yesterday. One of our Clemens deputies was downtown here in Winston-Salem and he was headed back to Clemens. So he was on Interstate 40 right at the interchange where we call it the split, where 421 splits off of 40. And he made a traffic stop. Uh, he made a traffic stop right after the split, right before the Jonestown Road overpass. Obviously that's way outside of our flight area, but due to the power of this technology, I was able to fly the drone approximately a mile away from our launch location and use the power of the zoom on this camera to zoom in almost three miles away and we could still see this deputy on the traffic stop. Um, it turned out that the driver had a warrant for his arrest, so the deputy was alone on this traffic stop. He was making the arrest and then our communication center began radio checking him, asking him basically if he is okay and he was not answering up to those calls. Several attempts were made, a beep was sent out over the radio, he was not answering his radio. We had zoomed in with the camera and were able to see that he appeared to be okay. He was outside of his vehicle and he was talking with, I believe, another person who had been in the car. And um, so this live stream footage of, from the drone was actually sent upstairs to our communication center as well. They could see it. So they saw him walking around the back of his car and getting in his car. And then once he was in his car, I think his radio may have been turned down and he realized they were trying to reach him and he said he was okay. So that's just one incident that makes us as a drone team feel like we are providing information to communications, to the rest of the deputies in the, on the ground, to even supervision that makes all of us feel safer and we feel like this program will make our community safer, make the village of Clemens safer. Uh, the response times for this drone are, are very quick, uh, very low, just due to the fact that, as Sheriff said, it flies in a straight line distance. We don't have to go the roads and use stoplights and everything else. So um, we're very thankful here. We're very excited about this new technology and we just see this program continuing to grow. So at this time, I'm going to introduce Michelle Barson. She is the Mayor Pro Tem of the Village of Clemens. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today. I can't believe how quickly that this has all been able to be put together. Um, but it's exciting to get to recognize this accomplishment um, by the Sheriff and his staff. And I'm honored to have been a part of the process. The Village and the Sheriff's Office have worked together for many months. <laughs> Um, to create and implement the DFR pilot program in Clemens. I'm confident that the program will produce positive results and that other municipalities will be just as excited to bring this enhanced level of safety to their residents. <laughs> Introducing the mayor of Clemens, Mike Rogers. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Barson. Good morning, I'm Mayor, Pro, I'm Mayor Rogers of Village of Clemens. Sometimes I'm Mayor Pro Tem, I would, you would think. Um, it's exciting to be here today. The Village of Clemens supports our law enforcement partners and their plans to enhance the already exceptional service to our residents. The safety of Clemens residents is always at the forefront of our minds and as Mayor 
and council, we aim to be as effective as possible with our available deputies. We are confident that this project will allow the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office to bring to Clemens yet another advanced level of service. The Sheriff and his team do a brilliant job and we are glad to partner on this project to move forward with this new technology for public safety. Thank you all for your time. Sheriff uh, Kim Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mayor. You know, some of the, just the examples that they gave about how the drone works, you know, the example that he gave that the deputy was making a traffic stop and um, wasn't able or did not answer up on the radio. Had they not had the drone in the air, we would have been sending cars that way, cold one. But that was just another example of de-escalation. There's so many examples that I can give you of what this drone does in terms of looking for missing persons. Uh, I can give you an examples of situations where we've been out on SWAT call outs uh, at night and had to use the drone to be able to see what's going on at night. There are so many capabilities that this drone has, some that we haven't even had a conversation to discuss with you, that we're very grateful for the residents that believe in us. I'm very grateful for the county commissioners that support us. And I'm grateful for you all for being here to share our story because it's one that deserves to be shared. And as residents of this county, we're proud uh, to have raised the bar and continue to raise the bar. So what I would like to do, uh, we do have uh, Mr. Raybar here from Drone Sense. Uh, any questions that you may have about what we're doing, how we're doing it, I'm sure you want to know how much the drones cost. I'm sure you want to know that. Uh, so I got a price for you. I don't hold it to the exact amount, uh, but somewhere in the ballpark, fair enough. I don't want nobody to say what well, he said this, so we'll say approximately, right? But uh, any questions that you may have, and again, we're looking forward to expanding this throughout the county and the city. We've already received phone calls from other sheriff's office, uh, Buncombe County, that is wanting to implement the same program uh, in other parts of the state of North Carolina. And so we know that it works. Uh, we have seen uh, the effects, and we're going to share this technology, not only with the sheriff's office, but our plans is to, to assist in giving the traffic reports, if you need the traffic reports in the morning. We want to be a part of this community and share this technology because at the end of the day, uh, we are better together. At the end of the day, when we use technology, we're safer. And uh, if you're not using it and you're standing still, you become stagnant and we believe in being progressive and staying on the move. So I'll be quiet and uh, answer up any questions that I can't answer. I have a team of people here, as I said, that uh, be willing to answer any questions that you may have uh, from me. But again, I want to acknowledge all of the drone members, all of the people at the FCSO, uh, all of my friend from uh, Drone Sense uh, from, for being here this evening, the, the village of Clemens, uh, because without them, we couldn't have done this. Everybody has been instrumental in pulling this together from FAA regulations to new policies and procedures as it relates to how we're gonna use and when we use the technology. And so uh, we're excited about it. We're very excited that we have this capability and we are using it now. And we're looking forward to expanding it throughout the county. So any questions that you have? How many drones are currently in operation? Just one. We're only using one. How many drones do we have? Or how many are we using? How many are, yo, well, how many are you using? We're using we're using one like that right now. The follow up, how many do you have? Six. six. You said approximately. Approximately six. No. <laughs> you talked about cost a couple times. What, what does a drone cost? Approximately. I mean, you know, you get 60, and I, my numbers ain't what they used to be, but <laughs> about, about 20, 20, 20, 24, 20, 27,000. 27, for that model right there. For that there. model right there. I knew I was just clowning. <laughs> 27, 27. So, Sheriff, what's the range of the drone, and where is it, where will it actually be taken off? So, so, seriously, where the drones leave from, we want to leave that confidential because we don't want people knowing where we're launching from in Clemens. So that part I won't answer. But we do launch from Clemens. Uh, uh, the range of it, he said, is about two miles out. What's the full range on them? We routinely, 
like right. line of sight we get. So currently we are flying this drone what is called line of sight with the FAA rules. So we have a pilot stationed on the roof where the drone launches from and basically whichever direction we are flying in he keeps the drone in his sight. We have applied for an additional waiver with the FAA to be able to fly this drone outside of our site. It's called beyond visual line of sight. If and when that gets approved, we will be able to fly this drone upwards of two miles from its launch location. So just imagine two miles from the launch location, we could cover Clemens. Sheriff Kimbrough. Yes, sir. So one of the things you mentioned was that you're one of the first agencies in the state to do this. Do you think that other agencies, they're already calling you, but do other agencies across the state, are they looking to awards for site as an example? Of course, uh, of course. I, I say that because to see this in action is actually, uh, it's mind blowing. It, it's, it's a whole nother process to be able to see what's happening on the ground in real time. It's a safety tool as well that your people get to be informed of what they're going into. You're able to capture things. If the person leaves uh, and go in a certain direction, we got the drone there, we're capturing all of the movement. So for an example, um, the conversation I've been having with the sheriff in Buncombe County, uh, actually um, they're ready to move forward on this. So it's a conversation across the state that people are having on drones as a first responder because what is it, 11 in the country now? 11 across the country that are using it. Think about it, it was only one some years ago, two, three, four, now here we come 11 you know, there's no one using that from here, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and so forth. And we're 11 in the country, in the whole United States of this America. So it's a growing phenomenon. The 911 Live, right? Originally it was only one. Now there's how many? Under 80. Under 80 911 Live. And that's across these whole United States. And so technology starts off slow because people are sometimes resistant to change. You know, some of the conversations we were having was, here we go with Big Brother watching us again. This is not a Big Brother 2 watching you. And we've had satellites, those that are old enough to remember the Gulf War, we saw the, 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 the rockets dropping as we were sitting at home in the comfort of our home. So technology has existed. You know, in 2000, as an agent, we were using drones. What I'm saying is that some people are resistant to technology because, you know, well, here come Big Brother, are they watching us? And, and as uh, Sergeant Mulling said that, we're not invading anyone's privacy, we're not. And you know, what I have said from the beginning, any time that we launch a drone, it's documented. So if someone wants to say, hey, what did that drone see that time? There's a process that they can follow to see what that drone saw to make sure that we're towing the line on it. Because we want, as always, we want the trust of the people. That is what I wanted from day one. Because when you have the trust of the people, you have the buying of the people, and you have the power of the people. And so we want that. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. What, what's the battery life on those for? What's, how long can you fly? And then 45, 45, 45 minutes. And then are you restricted to the, the, the no-fly zones around the airport, around Atrium? Are you restricted? Can you fly through those zones? Or? So yeah, what's, what's the requirements? Basil, um, sorry. I didn't know you were talking about expanding throughout the county. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, one fortunate thing is in the village of Clemens, it's very um, open airspace. It's uncontrolled airspace. There are no airports nearby. If we were flying over off of Liberty Street, obviously we'd have different concerns with Smith Reynolds Airport. But in the village of Clemens, it's totally unrestricted airspace. Oh, wait, before you actually sit down, yes. uh, one of the things that was mentioned was, um, during the example you gave, Sheriff Kimbrough, was that the drone was able to respond to a case that you guys mentioned in roughly two minutes. Is that universal, is that standard, uh, or is it like a case-by-case -case basis depending on where you're sending the drone? It's case-by-case. Case. It's case-by-case, case, but our flight area pretty much now is somewhere around a mile, maybe a mile and a half in some direction, so it would depend when you're going to those outer limits of your flight area. Uh, what have we seen? Maybe three minute response time, including the climb to altitude. So, max. three minutes is pretty much the max we can get anywhere in our flight area. Thank you. And that's pretty impressive because typically, uh, go ahead, Basil. Uh, I got a question about six 
me like it might be useful. So I'll just quickly respond to your, your question about expansion. So um, the North Carolina legislature uh, awarded Aero X $5 million to build what's called an advanced air mobility system. And so when we think about expanding this uh, program, what we're building is a low altitude aircraft surveillance system. So we have a, a, a radar that will be able to detect where medevac helicopters are coming in and out of the hospitals, the aircraft that are flying in and out of Smith Reynolds. And this is the only site in North Carolina that's going to have this. And so that level of safety and awareness of the aircraft flying is going to be key in the expansion of this program. Yes, sir. I knew you had a question. Yeah. Um, seems to me it might be useful in some situations, like if you have a missing person or whatever, be able to communicate with that person directly from the drone. Does it have a speaker on it where you can tell people or communicate back and forth? So good. How serious the situation is. Go ahead, ahead man. I'll let you handle that. So there's different speakers and models that are available for all of these platforms. Um, but the public has always realized in those situations, um, when you're the victim and you're lost, um, merely seeing the presence of law enforcement or seeing presence of public safety um, is very helpful. So you can even see a thumbs up that they could give to the to the teleoperator. Um, you're getting that verbal feedback that, hey, they realize you're there watching, you're responding, you're sending more people their way. Um, but there are different options for speakers and things as well. Matt, will you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Officially, since you chose not to speak. Yeah. My name is Matt Ryber. I'm with Unmanned Vehicle Technologies. Uh, we sell hardware, software, and really are a solutions integrator for public safety to help bring all these different technologies together. And you know, that was a good question that you asked. You know, as the future evolves and as we evolve and we get more buy-in from the public, there are so many delivery systems that you can put on a drone. If you really understand how drones work, there are so many delivery systems that we can put on the drone. But it is a process that we want to build into. I have another question. Yes, sir. Oh, question to have. Uh, so, is the drone applicable in you know multiple scenarios? You know, missing person, maybe domestic abuse, something along. So the that's a good question. So what we do is, you know, we get a range of calls. We get a range of calls from uh, dogs barking to cattle that have ran out of the barn. And so what we do is, when the call comes in, depending on what kind of call it is, you know, they come in, they rate them code one, code two call life, emergency, blue light, siren. And so depending on the call and the category that the call comes in is what we're using. But in missing persons, of course, because the drone can cover more area, as well as with the infrared and so many things, the technology that this drone has, the night vision, the infrared, the heat seeking, all of those things that it has and capabilities that we use it. And so depending on what the call is in the situation determines. But if it's a cold one call, like the one that I, I, I described about, uh, the, the domestic situation at the uh, restaurant, uh, that was one that was needed because you want to get something, the presence of law enforcement there, you want to be able to document it, you want to be able to capture it. That way the deputy going into it knows what he's going into. Uh, we can say, hey, the guy has ran behind the building and all of those things. So depending on what the call is, uh, denotes how we use it, utilize it. And the information the drone provides really does change the game for the safety of officers exactly. and people involved, right? And that, that, is so, that is so key, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the information that the drone receives actually can escalate it or de-escalate it. You know, a call could come in, a man walking, arguing, but the drone gets there and the drone picks up, you are talking about with a mild lens, two mile lens, see the man has set the gun behind somewhere, done something like that, which gives the officer real-time information that there's a weapon here, there, or whatever's going on. And so, it is key when you start utilizing the drone. And as I said, you know, when you see it in operation, you really understand what you're working with then. You don't really, really get into, you say, wow. It's a wow moment. Yes, sir. Uh, you guys said you have one drone operational, correct, right now? Or you guys are using one drone right now? Right. Uh, when, and you guys said you have five more. When is the timeline to be able to use all six of those at the same time or like, you know, on a rotation or something like that? So we have more than one drone. We're using one right now. Uh, we have a range of drones that can do a host of things depending on what we're doing. We have a drone unit. And so we have approximately six, give or take, add one or two, whatever, right? Uh, but uh, we utilize them as we need them. You know, the Weaver fire that, 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 that you saw that took place here, that was one of the, the uh, FCSO drones that you saw flying and capturing uh, lifetime uh, photos. 
Uh, so we have a range of drones, but uh, I'll let Sergeant Mullins. Yes, sir. Uh, well, my next question would be, um, are they just like that, or are they like or maybe smaller yeah. ones, different something for different Two. applications? All right, so I'll clarify something about um, the operation we've been talking about today, the Clemens drone as first responder. That is just one arm or one branch of our drone operations here at the Sheriff's Office. This drone that you're seeing right now is actually stationed in my vehicle. It is a mobile response drone, but the one that we're using in Clemens is the identical drone to this one. It's the same make and model and everything. So we have the one drone that's like this stationed in Clemens that it only operates in that area. And then the other drones are in vehicles with deputies that are assigned to patrol in other divisions. So when something else happens anywhere in the county, we have mobile response units that are able to go and respond to those incidents. And so if a drone goes down, I guess, do we have the capability of we need to put one up in the air alone in 45 minutes? Of course we do. And if one goes down and we need to put another one up, of course we do. Any more questions? Well, um, again, I appreciate you all coming. I appreciate you being a part of history here in the county uh, because it is truly history. And I appreciate you sharing our story. I appreciate the work that you all do. Uh, I got yeah. one final question. Let's go ahead. Get go ahead. Um, what about safety, people on the ground? People might want I knew to you, you know what, I, I knew, listen, as I was about to close, I said, am I gonna get away without him asking that? <laughs> yeah, right, right. So again, the technology that the drone has, you know, we, we can detect when things are going on with it. Uh, there's so many things that he can do to an abort a mission. There's so many things he can do to avoid uh, catastrophe like that. But go ahead, Sarge. <laughs> yes, sir, so the, um, this drone has obstacle avoidance sensors all the way around it on every side. Um, one safety mechanism that we have, especially for the Clemens operation, is there is only one communications tower in our flight area that is above 400 feet. It's actually a 420 foot tower. Uh, so we know where it's at. It's, uh, it's easily visible to us. We have basically what is called a geofence in our flight operations center that is on the back side of that tower, so we don't fly the drone on the back side of the tower for safety reasons, because if there is a disconnect between the drone and the controller, the drone will automatically just turn and fly straight back to its home base. So we wouldn't want it being on the back side of that tower and trying to fly back to home base, because that tower is the only thing in the village of Clemens that protrudes through our 400 foot flight area and all of our flights in Clemens are conducted at 400 feet. So we're well above any other trees, towers, anything else in the village except that one tower and we have it geofenced off in our, in our system. You see the research that has went in to make sure that safety and all the precautions have been taken. We just didn't wake up one morning and say we're going flying. But again, I wanna thank you all for being here. I appreciate you again for being a part of history. I wanna thank the people of this county for allowing us to sit in the office of the people I want to thank the commissioners. I want to thank all of the command staff, all of the men and women that work here at the FCSO. I want to thank the village of Clemens. I want to thank you all. Uh, have a great day. And again, thank you.